game! Badge, every now and again a game comes along that's incredibly simple in concept but still manages to create a thoroughly rich and emotional experience. The PSN downloadable title Journey, created by that game company, is one of those games. When you first start the game, you get the impression that your character, an unknown robed figure, feels about as lost and confused as you do. That is, until you spy in the distance a large mountain with a glowing light at its summit. This becomes the only goal available to you, so you begin your journey to reach it. The landscape is vast and empty, and you immediately feel a real sense of loneliness. Yeah, there's no map or initial instructions. You simply head towards a few ruins you see emerging from the sand dunes in an attempt to find answers, and you'll start to get a bit of a handle on the way your character moves in the game. You can run, sand dunes can be surfed down, but the way you gain height is what's most intriguing. Ribbons of fabric that spring from the ground, clusters of little flags, and strange flying fabric creatures all have a kind of living entity to them, which you can communicate with and bump into to give you a lift for a short period of time. You yourself are imbued with a unique symbol, which sounds out musical notes when you press circle. And by holding this, you'll release a charge of energy that awakens these fabric ribbons. Your own cloth cape will light up with symbols that can denote how long you're able to fly for, and hidden or hard to reach symbols can be located to extend the length of your cape, allowing you to fly even longer. I was just starting to get the hang of all this when all of a sudden I realised I was no longer alone in the desert. Another robed figure suddenly appeared who looked just like me. At first I thought this was an AI, but then, I don't know, I thought their behaviour seemed a little bit too erratic to be an AI, but then I couldn't see any kind of username or indication that they were a player. But every time we'd bump into each other, we'd fill up our little capes with light, allowing us to fly, so it became this kind of cooperative dance. You know, initially I actually logged out a few times and back in again just to make sure that it wasn't an AI character and, you know, I realised I was encountering a new player each time, some who wanted to play really cooperatively and some who didn't. But when I found a buddy that actually wanted to work together, it was wonderful. You know, we'd constantly communicate with each other by hitting that little musical note button, sometimes to get each other's attention, but sometimes, you know, just to check in with each other as we ran. I like that subtle glow around the edge of the screen as well to give you a sense of where that other player is. I feel like you really sense their presence. Mm. The art design in this game is just wonderful, isn't it? Simple but so beautiful. And each landscape unfolds in front of you. And my favourite way to take it all in were those sand surfing sections. get such a sense of smooth freedom as you glide down them and fly up into the air. Some sections take you through areas and chambers that involve jumping puzzles. These require careful activation of fabric entities to progress. Others have sinister creatures that will attempt to impede your progress. All the while trying to piece together exactly what your purpose is. Hidden paintings that can be found and brought to life by you will provide cryptic clues, and wordless cutscenes that play out between areas will also help you to piece together bits and pieces about who you are and where it is you might be going and why. But really, this is one of those games that's left largely open to interpretation. We have our own theories, but I don't want to spoil too much for you because this is one of those games that's really about your own discovery. Yeah, and it's such a unique game that I think people will have different experiences and reactions to what goes on and interpret things differently. One common thread between our experiences was just how emotional and affecting it is. Oh, unbelievably so, and the strangest part is I don't even know why exactly. It's the adversity of the environment you have to overcome, the joy of uniting with this stranger in a strange land, and just the elation that overcomes you as you spiral through the air when you get lifted up on the wind. Largely, I think it's the music that played the biggest part in creating an emotional response in me. That beautiful ebb and flow of strings and orchestral movements that seems to be timed perfectly with each shift in the landscape.
You know when you watch a really good film and there's that climactic moment where the central character triumphs and your eyes get all watery and the music swells? You know, I had that moment several times while playing this. And I think it's so interesting that this kind of character, who you know nothing about, can create that kind of reaction. You have it for such a short amount of time and you know so little about what's going on and yet you get so invested in this. Yeah, and there's no dialogue or anything. You know, I mean, this is the kind of experience that I was really hoping for out of Dear Esther. These are both essentially games about going on a journey in which you have no idea who you are or where you're going or why, but here that journey just was so much more engaging with objectives, a unique character movement system and interactions to be had. Every discovery just felt so worthwhile. I mean, here is a game that just got that concept so right. Yeah, and unlike Dear Esther, here I felt like I had an actual purpose or a semblance of a purpose, you know, something to strive off for in the distance. They did a wonderful job with the subtle visual clues, and I love chasing those carpet dragons. Although at one point I got stuck on one of those dragons' heads, and I couldn't get off, and my poor co-op buddy trailed behind, doing all the work. He looked so sad. Catch up! <laughs> I love those moments where you're trying to communicate with your co-op buddy and they just don't get it, or vice versa. At one point I spied a hidden symbol I wanted to go back and try and grab, but my co-op buddy just kept trying to tell me where the next area was. You know, I'm furiously pushing this little musical note button trying to explain where I'm going, but he just had no idea what I was doing. Yeah, those water sections were fantastic, weren't they? Where the fabric takes on the look of seaweed. The final area of this game is definitely the most spectacular, so we won't show it for fear of spoiling. Yeah, and it's so frustrating too because that doesn't leave us much to show you, as the biggest complaint you'd probably have about this game is that it's disappointingly short. It's priced quite reasonably, but it's just, you know, I was enjoying the experience so much, I just really wish there was more of it. Badge, I ended up playing through this twice just so that I could get the most out of it, and that final area was even more breathtaking the second time. You know, in many ways, I don't want to talk about this game at all because I feel like the best experience is one where you just know nothing about it. But at the same time, I really want people to play it, so I want to show it off in wonderful detail. Uh, regardless, though, I think probably everyone will be disappointed with the length. I wasn't disappointed with the length. I thought it was fine. The, it's the sort of game that you want to play in one sitting, and, and like you said, maybe play again. And I thought that the, the stuff that was in this game trumped the fact that it is so short. And these are the kind of games that that game company like to make. You can feel the DNA of their other games intertwined with this one, the wonderful music interaction of flow and the, the freedom you felt with Flower, even though I thought Flower was completely stupid. You feel all of that in here. and This is much more interesting than those games. It's a game that has its own language and it's so much fun trying to decipher that and then trying to use that language to communicate to someone else who's also trying to decipher it. But more importantly, it speaks the language of gamers. You just instinctively know that you need to climb over that peak and go over there and do that thing. Bajo, I'm not a crier, I want that known, but oh, just the music, it was so moving. I admit it, I cried a little bit. Well, it was. Shut up. Uh, I bawled my eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you stay to the end though. The very end of the credits, the screen will pop up with all your usernames and corresponding symbols of all the players that you met on your journey. Bajo, I adored this. I'm giving it nine. I'm giving it nine too.